Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's November 9th. These are your headlines. Sebago salmon stocking is underway in Rhode Island waters this week. We're also hearing about really surprisingly good cod fishing inshore. And togging has been exceptional across southern New England. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Again, we've got some news items to share with you. The first one comes to us from the Fisherman's Own, Jenny Ackerman. It's the continuation of her open boat series, and this one's all about how to stay warm in the surf. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's open boat. Today, we're going to be talking about extending your fall run season. Now, a lot of guys, they'll throw in the towel after Thanksgiving, and depending on what bait is around, if bass are still around, you can extend your season almost to the new year. So today, we're going to be doing a little fall run fisherman fashion show where I'm going to go through everything that I wear to stay warm and you got to think if you're sitting out there in a 72 hour soak you got to be in the proper apparel to stay warm and stay focused on catching a trophy bass. All right so first up you got the good old waders. So some people have the neoprene waders. Frog togs these aren't neoprene so they're a little light. So what I like to do is I wear wool socks and my leggings are Grundin's fleece lined leggings. So that keeps my legs warm, especially if I'm waiting and that water can be cold. So you want to have your lower half warm. So fleece lined leggings, guys, if you don't want to wear leggings like I do, you can wear some blue jeans. Um, and another important thing, it doesn't matter what you're wearing underneath your waders if you have holes in your waders. So after every fishing trip, make sure to check your waders. So I got two holes and make sure you patch them before your next fishing trip. If you're in the market for buying waders, we recommend going a shoe size up because they're based off a of shoe size. Um, going that shoe size up means you can layer more. You can wear thicker socks. You can wear thicker pants layers. Like you just want to go one size up so you know that you're warm in your waders. Next up is your surf top. Now I have a neoprene surf top. The word of the day for the fall run I guess is neoprene because that's like the best fabric to keep you warm. Um, it's like wetsuits are neoprene and surf tops and some waders are neoprene. So remember one thing from this, it's neoprene. So this is my surf top. Give me five minutes, I'll put it on and I'll show you. So the, the surf top has neoprene sleeves underneath their, the showing sleeve. So it just keeps everything sealed in. So to seal in the bottom, I just tighten the straps down here. And then you have a Velcro, Velcro strap up here to tighten and it keeps your like neck area a little bit more covered so you don't have that cold breeze chilling in and getting your chest cold because you don't want to get sick. And I didn't wear a hoodie today, but you can wear a hoodie underneath your stormer. Put the hood on before you put on the stormer jacket or your surf top. And then this one also comes with a hood too. So sometimes if I'm in rough conditions, I will double up hoods and of course, you can't leave home without a lucky beanie. So I have my lucky Grumpy's pom pom beanie here that I wear on my head, it keeps my ears warm. And you can put your hood up too, if you wanted to. And it's relatively hot out right now. I am very warm. So you will be very warm too in the fall run late season. Pray for sand eels because if we have sand eels, we could be fishing through December. So now it's time to go fishing. Catch you guys next week. 
As we talked about in the intro, Sebago salmon are being stocked across the ocean state this week. Uh, started on Tuesday, it's going to wrap up tomorrow, going to wrap up Friday. Uh, there are Sebago salmon, there are rainbow trout, and there are brook trout being stocked in 16 ponds. That's up from 10 last year, which is pretty cool. Uh, we'll put a list up here so you can pick the one that's closest to your house to get in on that. Um, if you're interested in knowing more about the Sebago salmon, I did a whole article on it in our November edition. It talks about what a Sebago salmon is, where they come from, where the state got them, and how to catch them. So you may want to read up on that before you go out there and, uh, and do it. And this is all being done as sort of a thank you to veterans and also to encourage Rhode Island residents to get out there on this day of remembrance and do some fishing. Um, Veterans Day is November 11th, that's this Sunday. It's also going to be observed on Monday by um, most businesses, so you may have that day off as well, so you can kind of get two days of fishing in if you want to. Uh, but it's cool fish, it's cool fishery, and uh, you know, get out there and notch that Sebago salmon off your personal list of species caught. Last thing, of course, is a giveaway, which is ongoing. I've got a picture here of what we're going to be giving away. It's kind of a smorgasbord of different things from Berkeley and Savage. And uh, hopefully it's going to get you inspired to get out there and do some fishing. It's, uh, this one's going to wrap up at the end of January, so the last Wednesday in January. I forget the exact date off the top of my head right now, you have to forgive me for that. But I'm also going to add a little side bet to this thing. Um, I've got a little surplus of uh, Tsunami Tog jigs, so I figured I'll put those together. And between now and the end of November, whoever sends me the best Tog photo will get these. Uh, and I don't even care if it was caught before I announced this thing. You know, if you caught it back in September and it's a great photo, send it in to danderson at thefisherman.com and just put, you know, a tog jig giveaway or whatever in the subject line so I know what it's for. And make sure you tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me your name. Tell me the, you know, general area it was caught, how you caught it, blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, at the end of this month, we will pick a, we'll pick a winner. I'll announce this one the first week of December. And, um, you know, obviously the other giveaway will continue along with it. So get those in to me. You can, again, you can email them to danderson at thefisherman.com or you can text them to the number on the screen. And uh, we'll pick a couple winners over the next few months. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing. That nothing says no to fish bites. Moving over into the reports now, we are still getting some striped bass reports from Maine. If you want my personal opinion, I think most of these fish that are being caught in Maine at this point are going to stay in Maine. I think they're resident fish. They're going to go up to Saco River and winter over. Uh, I've even heard that there's a uh, small spawning population up there. So um, I think those fish are, are down easters themselves, and I don't think they're going to leave the area. Uh, but, you know, you just drop down a little bit down to northern Massachusetts and we're hearing good reports from the beaches still. Uh, I talked to James Jukes this week. He's not feeling well today, so we're not going to get a video from him. But he said, uh, you know, before the dark cloud descended on him, um, he was getting still getting good fish up there. They had fish at 38 inches on the beaches uh, early, early in the week this week. Uh, they were doing it with needlefish, red fins, and live eels. And then uh, he talked to some guys that were doing some backwater fishing. Uh, up inside the estuaries, and they were finding schoolies up there in good numbers as well. So the striped bass fishing is still alive and well in that region. He said he was also hearing about some good largemouth bass fishing and pike fishing up inside the Merrimack River. So there's a lot of opportunity in that area. Swinging down through Boston, we didn't get any reports this week. I can tell you for sure that there are some uh, striped bass along that range because, I mean, if Jim's still getting them on the beach, they're definitely in that area. Also, freshwater fishing is going to be good in that area because all of Massachusetts has been stocked with trout. So um, you can go to the DFW website and check the ponds near you. Find the one that's closest to you if you want to go do some trout fishing. Uh, we did get some striped bass reports from like Cohasset, Situate area. Uh, most of these fish are on the smaller side, say 20 to 30 inches. But it did see one fish that went over 20 pounds. And, um, you know, the... The waves of fish have become fewer and further between. They've been a little bit more sporadic, but there's still opportunity there. And, um, you know, any one of these waves could be the last one for you guys. So, you know, get out there and make it happen while you can. Jumping out onto the Cape. Uh, a lot of news on the Cape has been more geared toward freshwater. All of the ponds out there have been stocked. And uh, a lot of guys are doing well with trout. And uh, I've been seeing some nice brown trout caught at night. And then I've seen largemouth bass up to seven pounds that have come from, you know, what I would call the Cape region. So the Cape, and then, you know, that sort of approach to the Cape that goes from the canal up to like Route 24. 
Uh, that's been a really hot area for largemouth bass, as it almost always is. Striped bass action on the Cape is still a viable option. Um, we've got some schoolies around some of the estuary mouths on the bay side. There's been some sporadic topwater action along the outer beaches. But if you really want to, you know, sort of have your best opportunity, you want to fish the Nantucket Sound beaches where there's still some slot size fish here and there. Some of these fish are moving up into the ponds now. And then if you jump over to the vineyard, if you got a ferry ride in here, or if you're out there anyway, um, still hearing about Bonito and Albies on the south side, still some small bluefish out there, and some better sized stripers, you know, upper 30 inch range stripers along the west and north side of the island. So, um, you know, still some pretty good fishing out on the island right now. The Elizabeths are still giving up tog, they're still giving up striped bass. Um, I haven't heard any like spectacular reports from there, but the togging in particular has been good. Pop through into Buzzards Bay and up toward the canal. Um, the canal has had stripers all week, but most of them have been under the slot. There's been a few slot size fish. I haven't heard of anything of size now in at least 10 days. Uh, I have still heard about a few albies in the canal, which kind of surprised me. Um, this was a report I got over the weekend. Could be completely over by now. But the albies that were in the canal uh, were some pretty good sized fish. So um, if that doesn't tell us anything else, it at least tells us that the water temperatures are still higher than we would normally expect for, you know, the second week in November, which is, which is good no matter what species you might happen to be fishing for. Heading out of the canal, up along the Buzzards Bay shoreline, still a few albies out around uh, New Bedford Harbor. Uh, there's been a few bonito there as well. Must be tons of bait there because the albies seem like they've left everywhere else. Togging in that region has been very good, and as you get out more toward Westport and the Rhode Island border, um, we are seeing a lot more cod mixing in and some decent sized fish, a lot of keeper sized cod uh, being caught in like, you know, 45 to 75, 80 feet of water right now. Um, that's where the tog are as well. And there's still lots of sea bass being caught even though the sea bass is closed in Massachusetts. I just want to remind you guys of that. You cannot keep a sea bass in Massachusetts no matter how big it is. Um, but the bottom fishing is very good, and there's been several waves of striped bass moving through that area as well. So fishing overall in Massachusetts for the time of year that it is has been pretty good, pretty solid. Moving over into Rhode Island, let's start things off with an East Bay report from TJ Kopecki. Thanks, Dave. Hey guys, got a quick video uh, report for you from uh, a little bit of the East Bay area, um, a lot of the Maho Bay, and uh, a trip out to Newport, such as Point, that I had made uh, this weekend. We're going to start up inside the Barrington and Warren Rivers. The tog fishing from the shore is still good in the shallow waters. Um, not sure why. Uh, usually by this time the fish are starting to move out, but uh, there's been a great bite and he is a lot of shore access for you behind the American tour stuff on the Warren and Barrington bridges. People have been catching fish, keepers. There's been some good sized fish caught up inside the rivers this week. Striped bass are still lingering around the bridges at night. Uh, if you can get up on top of the, the car bridge and fish down, there's been some nice schoolies in there, ranging from 15 inches, which is on the small side, uh, all the way up to like 25, 26 inches. I haven't seen those big keeper fish that were in there last week around. Uh, we did see some of those fish further out in the bay, and we'll get to that in one second. Uh, moving into Mount Hope Bay, uh, there's been a lot of bass and a lot of bait. Um, up along the Kikimua, Coles, and Lees River, surrounding all three. You just gotta find the birds. Actually, you don't even have to find the birds. Sometimes you can just be moseying along out in your boat and you'll just see the fish boiling everywhere. Um, and that's just kind of like what happened to me on Sunday. Uh, I had taken a trip out to Newport at such its point. We fished all day Sunday and we got on a phenomenal tatog bite. Uh, along with uh, some keeper sea bass. Uh, it was a good day, all in all. We had fish up to about 22 inches. We were hoping to get some uh, bigger fish, and I know there was some, or uh, well, there were some bigger fish that were weighed on Sunday that were caught. Um, 
We did see a lot of guys in the kayaks doing well. We managed to be fishing anywhere from 28 feet to about 45 feet. And we kind of stayed in the general area all day, moving uh, up on our anchor line back and forth, probably like 10 feet, back up 10 feet. We did really well. We had a nice piece of structure we fished on. We caught fish all day, it was fun. So uh, we got some uh, nice, nice fish for the table. Great fish to eat. Uh, moving up into the bay. There's still a lot of striped bass around. You just need to find the bait. Uh, there's fish all the way up into the Providence River. There were some stripers on Barrington Beach during the week. My friend Joe let me know that he uh, got into some nice fish on Wednesday of last week and Thursday morning, but he couldn't find the fish after that. So the fish are moving around, uh, striped bass particularly. Haven't heard of any blue fish around. Uh, so... Uh, there's still lots of good opportunities and I'm still going to try this weekend to get up into the Warren River and see how the Tatog bite still is and I'll let you know on the next report. Uh, one other thing not to count out around here in the East Bay is there's some really good freshwater fishing going on. There's a lot of nice green bass, largemouth. There's a lot of nice white perch in the Warren Reservoir. Uh, you got Brickyard Pond, Echo Lake and Barrington all have great perch fishing going on not just white perch but yellow perch uh, so if you can get into the freshwater and that's what you what you do in the east bay there's a great bite going on so uh lots of opportunities this weekend inside the east bay area the weather looks good the weather's about the water's about 56 degrees in the bay uh the most the highest i've seen it was 60 degrees at the Fall River boat ramp where we put the boat in. So uh, the water's still warm. I think the bass are going to be around for a little bit longer, uh, hopefully until Thanksgiving. But uh, we'll see you next week, tight lines. A uh, question I keep hearing from Rhode Island guys is, is it over for Albies? And um, I talked to my friend Nen, who's one of the, probably one of the hardest core uh, Albie fishermen that I have ever met. I talked to him this morning and he said, it's over, buddy. Um, so does that mean there's no Albies left? I would say no. Uh, I would say there are definitely still a few pods of Albies around. They're not going to stick around much longer, though. Uh, I would call it something you should be prepared for, but not something you can plan for. So, you know, go togging, go striper fishing. Uh, go do something that's a little more reliable. And uh, if the Albies pop up, you'll be ready to fire. Um, but I would say by this time next week, uh, the Albies should be pretty much gone. And um, eh, that's the breaks. That's the way it is this November. Uh, togging has been really, really good. And so is the sea bass fishing. Guys are finding these fish in 30 to 80 feet of water for the most part. And there's been a ton of codfish mixing in, which has been really cool to see. Even some really nice sized codfish. Um, which, you know, I love to see that. I love to see the... The cod just seemed to be making a slow comeback, and hopefully that continues. Uh, even saw some really nice ones that came from uh, Mikey D'Alfonso, one of our writers. Uh, he was fishing more toward the western side of the state, but um, very cool to see that. And uh, if you want to know a little bit more about how Mikey gets it done, you may want to check out his uh, article on deep wreck fishing also in this November issue. So uh, definitely check that out. Um, but we've been seeing a lot of big talk. Uh, this week hasn't seen quite the numbers that we saw two weeks ago as far as size, but we're still seeing double-digit tog being caught by a lot of different guys. And the best thing about it is most of these guys are releasing these fish, which I love to see. Um, sea bass and cod fishing out around Block Island has been very good as well. For a little bit more on that and some of the other things going on in the central part of the state, let's check in now with Captain John Lee from JL Charters. Hey, John Lee. Out on the pilot boat, a boat I run all winter. Um, I, I did three or four trips this past week.
Heading out of Point Judith along the South County beaches, uh, most of the guys I've talked to now have said it's been starting to quiet down. Um, that's not to say that it's over by any means, but there's just been more lulls in between waves of fish than there were, I mean, even last week. Most of the stripers that they're seeing are on the smaller side now, too. We're seeing schoolies up to like 30 inches, the occasional bigger fish being caught at night around the breachways, and uh, no reports of albies. Still some really tiny bonito around, though, which uh, you may run into if you're out fishing during the daytime. We already talked about the fact that the, there's been some codfish in the western part of the state. Uh, definitely check around like the Watch Hill Reefs. You'll probably find them there. And you'll probably find some good tog in that area as well. And that's what I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. Moving over into Connecticut. Uh, we started to hear a little bit more news coming from the race again. Sounds like it's mostly small striped bass, but they've been hitting diamond jigs. And there's been you know a couple of surface blitzes that have kind of roared through the area. Uh, over the last week, just you know, more migrating schools coming through. The more consistent bass fishing has been along the shoreline from the Thames River out to the Connecticut River. Uh, Thames has had an exceptional year, We've seen some really nice fish come out of the Thames up to 40 pounds. Um, but this week, haven't seen anything up to that size. The biggest fish we've seen this week have been around 38 inches. Um, but it's been top water action. Guys have been doing it with like sea worms. Guys have been doing it with live eels at night. Uh, guys are throwing. Uh, poppers and spooks during the daytime and they're finding fish. Uh, and that extends pretty much from there all the way out to the Connecticut River. Um, some pockets of better fish in the mix there, you know, 30 to 38 inch fish and then tons and tons of schoolies. Uh, definitely a good time of year to be crushing those barbs because there's a lot of small fish around. Togging has been good. Um, and the, the tog in this part of our reporting area are, tend to be a little bit shallower, so more like 30 to 60 feet as opposed to you know, 45 to 85 feet in other places right now. The exception to that would be out behind fishers where you're going to want to fish a little bit deeper. Um, up toward the Connecticut River, they got a new wave of stripers in the lower river, so the top water action is fired back up there, um, which is a great thing. Albi action throughout pretty much the eastern two thirds of the sound has gone quiet. They, for the most part, those fish have vanished. Uh, probably is still a few schools of them kind of firing around out there, but for the most part, uh, that's dried up. For a little bit more on what's going on in the Connecticut River region, let's toss it over now to Captain Mike Roy for Real Cast Charters. Hey, what's up, guys? For this week's fish report, there's still some schools of striped bass. I refer to these fish as transient fish. The fish are not staging in a particular area, so we're not finding fish in the same spot day after day, but some days we've been able to find some pretty good blitzes uh but these fish are on the move transitioning through long island sound probably going to their winter holding areas the black fishing depending on where you're fishing uh has been good um but some areas have just been overfished and there's just a lot of shorts most of the fish are going to be 15 15 and a half inches so uh if you get on a good piece of structure you should be able to get some good fish, but it's been, if it's been overfished, you're most likely going to be dealing with a lot of shorts. Um, and uh, that's it for this week's report. Good luck. Heading up the river, let's check in now with Rowan Lytle. Hey everybody. Now we've definitely settled into just a beautiful late fall pattern here in uh, central Connecticut in the River Valley. Uh, I was poking around today on the Salmon River. Decently productive, nothing crazy. I uh, got a few rainbows. Um, the flows are fantastic in most of our rivers. The Connecticut's settled into probably the best flow it's been since this spring. Uh, there should be really good pan fishing to be had uh, in these water temperatures and this weather. Big crappie, yellow perch, white perch, that sort of thing. The bottom end of the river, a lot of the uh, back creeks, tidal creeks, are loaded up with hickory shad right now. Just tons and tons of them. I was absolutely hammering those last night on a light fly rod. Uh, if you're looking for your last big bass and blues of the season in that lower end of the Connecticut River, chunking up some of those small hickory shad is a good way to go about that. Uh, but as we move on, I'm definitely expecting uh, to lose our migratory fish down there and shift into more a holdover pattern. So, not seeing as much blitzing down there. There's not as much bait far up the river like there's been in uh, seasons past. But there's certainly plenty of good fishing to be had still. And now we'll take a left out of the, actually a right out of the river, heading west, and uh, we'll check in with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. 
What's up everyone, Matt here at Black Hill Outfitters in Westbrook with this week's fishing report. I'm definitely into uh, kind of the heart of tog season into that kind of fall into winter transition mode right now. Uh, still a good amount of bass out there. The blues have thinned out quite a bit. Um, there's still bass working under birds. Um, the windows that they're feeding in are definitely shrinking. Um, there's still some good bass being pulled a lot on eels and eel imitations by a lot of the surf casters kind of targeting those tides and moons. Um, but those are going to obviously get progressively more difficult to find um, as we get further into November. Um, best bet if you're looking for stripers is look for birds. Um, get out there early, try to find um, some working birds. Uh, they love beaches this time of year, the stripers do, where they can kind of corral that bait. Um, tidal rips, outgoing tide, pushing the bait out into um, kind of like open, unprotected water, that kind of thing. Uh, in the central and eastern sound, very uh, scattered reports of some albies. Um, they did what they typically do and kind of thinned out um, almost overnight, it seems. And uh, I'd be surprised if we kind of continue to get those reports. They should pretty much be well gone um, for the year. Uh, tog bite has been great. Um, really, really strong tog blackfish bite going on right now. Um, still shallow fish, uh, 15, 20 feet. You can start there. Um, I fished well at 30 to 40 yesterday. Um, it's, it's really a full range of depths right now. Um, find some rocks maybe find some current near those rocks is always a good enhancer of that bite give it 15 minutes if you're not knocking them out move a little bit um, change spots the bite is out there it's very good um, it's a really fun uh, bite as as you folks know the tog bite is really fun really easy once you get on a good bite um, you got a whole day worth of, of bending the rod in for it for you so um, really good bite out there jigs and rigs both producing um, still some scattered porgies around i got to do a couple of those yesterday which is a little surprising but there's still a few of them kicking around as well um, guys targeting sea bass are still getting those as well um, deeper uh, 80 plus seems to be kind of the ticket for those but i have heard a couple guys come into the shop recently um, with some really solid reports so um, still the action is out there if you know where to go find it um, and as they do tog will carry us uh, through the month in this central part of the sound uh, we're seeing, still seeing some decent sized porgies. It's a good time of year to get a dream boat porgy. So if you're on the board and you want to sort of get a couple extra points, might be a good time to go out and look for some of those. togging has been good in this area and there's still been plenty of sea bass around as well as those fish sort of are cross mingling right now in, uh, in the same depths of water, which has been good. Um, striped bass activity has been a little bit more sporadic on the reefs but one place that's concentrating some fish is the mouth of the Housatonic river those fish are going to start moving up into the river now and that presents an opportunity to target some really nice fish right at the mouth of the river so check that out whether you want to throw plugs or top waters during the daytime or you want to drift eels or bounce jigs at night um, be a very good opportunity to catch some really nice fish right now and for a little bit more on what's happening in the western sound let's toss it over now to max finch from fisherman's world Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. Black fishing is fantastic. The striped bass are along our beaches, the Housatonic's heating up, big sea bass, porgies, and still some rogue albies around. The black fishing remains, you know, excellent in shallow and deep water. I would say deep water wrecks this time of year are really good. I know a couple guys getting out and I've seen some knothead sea bass and like, you know, blackfish up to eight and a half, almost nine pounds this past week. The shallow water bite is starting, you know, taper off with the porgies in shallow, so anglers are catching a lot more blackfish. Georgia's rock area is consistent, you know, Kakini Reef, Green's Ledge, and then our deep water wrecks like the Celtic on top of 28C. 28C itself remains really good. You know, the heavy structure areas, black sea bass mixed in, and then the wrecks outside, you know, Sheffield Island and the wrecks south of Kakini. The Albi reports are spotty, but they're still around. You know, really shallow water against our beaches from, I would say, Fairfield to New Haven. So just keep a rod ready. We've heard some schools pop up, you know, inside the islands too. So you gotta be ready, ready to cast. The striper fishing remains really hot. The diamond jig and bite at uh, 11B and 28 is still good. It's gonna really heat up coming this new moon with our bigger tides. You know, the outgoing tide is always best. Thanks and good luck. And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully it's going to inspire you to get out there. Um, got lots of fresh water going on. And just because, you know, the only largemouth bass fishing I talked about was out on the Cape, um, those fish are waking up across the region right now. Very, very good fishing in November that a lot of people don't take advantage of. So make sure you do that. you got an opportunity for Sebago salmon in Rhode Island. You've got trout stocked across all of Massachusetts. Connecticut has been stocked, and there's been salmon, Atlantic salmon stocked in the Chetucket and in the um oh, what the heck's the name of that river in that river that goes out of the uh out of the top of the of the Housatonic. it's just escaping my mind right now but 
the, uh, the Atlantic salmon have been stocked, and there's been great bottom fishing all across the region. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. It'll show you everything that we cover from Delaware all the way up to Maine, reports and articles that cover all that and every angling discipline in between, from freshwater to offshore, from surf to the boat to the kayak to paddleboard. It's all covered. We do travel stuff. We do how-to. Uh, we do tackle making. We do all kinds of stuff. It's 30 bucks for a year. You're going to get 12 issues. That's paper magazines sent to your house. You're also going to get 26 digital issues sent to your email box during the fishing season. That's in April to mid-November. It's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. You also get access to all the other editions, which is fantastic. Uh, if you're still not interested after doing all that and looking at that, which is hard to imagine, but at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. I appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.